This video is sponsored by Brilliant. Here we have 11 gears looped together. The question is, can all of these gears rotate at the same time? Like if I go and rotate one, will everything rotate together? Well, let's look at any two of the gears. Here, if we rotate one of them, let's say clockwise, the other one will move counterclockwise and vice versa. Same if we put another one down here. So we can see that any two neighboring gears must have opposite rotations. Thus, if we go back, given an attempted clockwise rotation on one gear, the next would be counterclockwise, causing the next to be clockwise, and so on until we get to the end and reach a problem, as these two would have the same rotation, which isn't possible. So the answer is no, these gears cannot all rotate together. If you had a loop like this, there'd have to be an even number of gears or else it'd be jammed. This was an example of a parity puzzle. Parity just being whether a number is even or odd, because that's really what the solution came down to. Not the exact quantity of gears or their size, but the parity. And the same thing applies to all of the problems to come. So there's your hint, now let's see the next question. Let's say you have three marbles labeled A, B, and C arranged on the table as shown. You're going to move one of the marbles through the other two, or the line connecting them, and you do this all the way through so the marbles are never collinear. Then you repeat this process however you like, moving one through the other two over and over. The question is, can you get back the original configuration after 15 moves? Before I just say the answer, a hint would be this is similar to the last problem in that it comes down to clockwise versus counterclockwise orientation. For example, right now going from A to B to C involves clockwise rotation. After I move one marble through the other two, going still from A to B to C involves counterclockwise rotation. It's switched, and after another move, it switches again. So regardless of what we do, the same walk in the same order will involve the opposite rotation. That means if we start here with this configuration, after an odd number of moves, you'll have that backwards orientation, meaning it would be impossible to get back in 15 moves, or any odd number. It would require an even number. Okay, for this next question, let's say we have a rook starting at the top left corner of a chessboard. The question is, can the rook move around the board such that it touches each square once, and only once, and end up on the bottom right tile? So it can't go over any tiles it already traced over, and you have to use legal rook moves, so no going diagonally. Now you don't need to start trying different paths to figure this out. There's 64 tiles here in total, meaning 63 moves must take place for this to be accomplished. Basically, 63 tiles need to be touched, ending on the bottom right. Now, each move of the rook switches the color it's on. If it's on a black square, the next single move must transition it to a white square, and vice versa. Since the rook started on a white square and must make an odd number of moves, 63, then it must end on a black square. And since that final square is white, then this puzzle is impossible. So that wasn't too bad, but I found another slightly more difficult version. We're given a 5x5 board and a rook that is allowed to start and end on any square. Can you touch each tile once and only once using, again, legal rook moves? Well, here since there are an odd number of tiles in total, 25, then the white and black squares won't be equal in number. In this case, there's one more white square than black. Also, since there are 25 squares, then it will take 24 moves to complete the task if it is possible. And since 24 is an even number, then the rook will end on the same color it starts on. If it starts on white, then it will go white, black, white, black, until you end on white. And if you start on black, then same idea. In each case, though, the color you start on shows up one extra time. Like on the left, there would be 13 white and 12 black squares that show up, whereas on the right, it'd be 12 white and 13 black. Meaning, to match the colors of the actual board, you need to start on white. If you start on black, then it's definitely impossible. But as you can see, we start on white, and it is possible in this case to go around touching every square once and only once, then end on white as expected. 
No, this does not prove it's always possible, but it definitely is impossible if we were to start on a black square. Now this next puzzle I showed in a video years ago, plus Numberphile recently did an even more advanced version, but it fits really well here. So if you've seen it, skip to this timestamp, otherwise, here we go. Here we have an 8 puzzle, a game where you mix up the tiles and you have to put it back to the original configuration of 1 through 8. Now let's say from the solved configuration, we just switch the last two tiles. The question is, is this solvable using only legal moves? This is definitely the toughest puzzle in this video if you've never seen it before, but it still has to do with parity. First thing I'm going to do is put the puzzle back to how it was and list the numbers horizontally the same way they're read left to right going down one row at a time. Now notice that if I move any number side to side, that does not change the horizontal ordering of the numbers since we don't care about the blank spot. The puzzle order is preserved, however if I do a vertical move, then the order is changed. And for any vertical move, that number will move two spots over on the horizontal line. And if we do another vertical move, like with the 7, then you'll see the same thing happens. It moves two spots over. Now going back, currently there are zero numbers out of order, of course. After the vertical move, there are now two numbers out of order. What I mean by that is out of all the comparisons you can make, two are out of order. You compare 1 and 2, these are in order, 1 comes before 2. 1 and 3 are in order, and same with 1 and 4, simply because still 1 is before 4, as it should be. We don't care about by how much. But compare 4 and 5, this is an out of order pair. 4 should come first, but it doesn't. And therefore 4 and 6 are also out of order. These are the only two pairs out of order though. Pick any other two numbers and you'll find the smaller number does show up first, as it should. Now realize that any vertical move, aka a shift over by 2, causes the out of order pairs to change by 2 or 0. Like if I move the 5 over, that does nothing to the horizontal list, but moving the 7 up, we again shift it over by 2 to this spot here. Before the move, these two numbers are in order, Thus, afterwards, they're out of order. These two are in order, so we see the same thing. So, the out of order pairs have gone up by two. See, we're only changing the order of two comparisons after a vertical move takes place. That's why the out of order pairs can change by a maximum of two. Now, if I move the eight over, and before the six goes down, we have an out of order pair and an in order pair. After the move, they both switch leaving still an out of order and an in order pair, meaning this value has changed by zero. So that's all that can happen, a change of two or zero. And in order to win the game, this value must be zero by the end, all numbers in order. So when we started with this scenario, the out of order pairs was one, just the seven and eight. All other comparisons are in order. And since that number can only change by two or zero, then this will never reach a value of zero, or any even number. The out of order pairs will always be odd, meaning this puzzle is impossible. Now moving on, this next puzzle is more of a geometric one. The goal here is to create a polygon, any polygon you want, such that you can draw a single line segment that crosses every single side, but does not touch any of the corners. So what I did here actually failed. The line segment touches a few sides, but not all of them. In fact, no matter what line segment I draw here, I can't touch every side. So now the question is, would this even be possible? And if so, what criteria would have to be met for it to be possible? Okay, spoiler, I'm just going to immediately answer the is it possible question, and that answer is yes, it is. Here's a polygon, for example, a strange looking one, where I can draw a single line segment and touch every side. To see what makes this possible, I found it more intuitive to first just draw that line segment. This here is the line segment that will intersect all sides. So now, let's construct that polygon. Since the line can't intersect corners, we have to start the polygon on one side of the line, as there are two regions this line segment divided our plane into. 
Now every side of the polygon must intersect the line. So it doesn't matter what I draw, but it has to cross that line. If it didn't, then that edge would not be intersected when we complete the polygon. So at this point, we've drawn one side. The next side also has to cross the line. So I don't know, I'll draw this. And now we've constructed two sides. In order to have a closed polygon, we need at least three sides, which would form a triangle. But if I were to make one right now, we'd have a polygon that is not intersected on all sides. That last edge fails. So we have to keep going and trace another third edge over the line segment. And here I can't even connect back without overlap, so I'll draw a fourth one and a fifth one. Notice that when we end on the opposite side we started on, we, at that moment, have an odd number of sides. When we land on the same side, that value is even. But since we have to connect back to the starting point, then that last connection has to come from the right region, leaving us with an even number of sides in total, in this case six. So it won't always be possible, but a necessary condition is that the polygon has an even number of sides. You need an odd number to get to that opposite region, then one more to connect back to the beginning. Having an odd number of sides would make this impossible. So these are just some examples of puzzles I really like, and I'm going to do another similar video soon. But for now, if you want to keep challenging yourself with similar questions and problems, I definitely recommend checking out Brilliant, the sponsor of this video. If you enjoyed what you saw here, their contest math courses would be exactly what you're looking for. These cover a variety of topics and specific problems which show up in advanced math competitions. Concepts include inequalities, modular arithmetic, combinatorics, probability, and much more. Plus, they also include problem-solving strategies such as using symmetry or finding invariance, which can reveal some hidden properties about the question at hand. It really is true that just sitting down and challenging yourself with new types of questions is the best way to improve your problem-solving abilities, and with all their intuitive animations along with constant practice problems, Brilliant's a great resource for doing just that. Then on top of all of this, they have dozens of other courses in math, science, and engineering for you to choose from. Also, the first 200 people to go sign up with the link below, or by going to brilliant.org slash zackstar, will get 20% off their annual premium subscription. And with that, I'm going to end that video there. Thanks as always to my supporters on Patreon. Social media links to follow me are down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.